Today we are going to talk about the manner of articulation of consonant sounds. Um, in the previous time we tried to find the answer to the question um, where does the articulation of a consonant sound take place, namely what articulators are involved uh, in the production of that sound, then today we are going to find the answer to the question how close to each other are the articulators. Um, you are going to see that they may touch and form a kind of a seal or they can approach each other, yet um, they form a small gap allowing the air stream to escape. So, we are going to see uh, in what way the air flows in the vocal tract. Uh, in English, there is the following classification of consonant sounds according to the manner of, uh, of articulation. Uh, thus, um, there are plosive consonant sounds, fricatives, approximants, a lateral approximant, uh, affricates and nasals. Um, let's um, analyze each category separately and see in what way the way uh, the air flows in each uh, particular case. We will begin with plosives. In order to get a better understanding, this diagram might help. What it shows is mm, the way the articulators, um, mm, how close to each other the articulators are. And you see that they touch each other, right? So um, you will understand better while pronouncing any of the sound. Let's take the first one, which is P. Uh, you notice that the active articulator, which is the bottom lips, um, moves towards the passive articulator, which is the top lip. Um, they touch, they form a seal, the air is stopped behind the closed lips, pressure builds up, then the active articulator suddenly moves away and the airstream is suddenly released. And in this way the characteristic popping sound of a plosive is produced. Definitely in the case of T, D, other articulators are involved, right? Um, the airstream is stopped uh, with the help of the tip of the tongue and the alveolar ridge. Um, uh, whereas in the case of k, g, um, it's the back of the tongue and the vellum that stop the air. Uh, the next type, mm, fricative sounds. What happens here? The articulators are extremely close to each other. However, they do not touch, so they do not form the seal. Instead, they form a small gap, allowing the airstream to escape. And in this way, the characteristic hissing sound, sound of a fricative is produced. Definitely while producing, for example, the sound f, you might notice that the sides of the mouth touch the top teeth. However, in the middle, be attentive, the small gap is created and in this way the airstream is released. Practice any of the sound and you are bound to see that the gap is present and the air escapes uh, gradually from that gap. The next type um, is uh, the approximate sound, right? Um, what happens here? Uh, the um, the um, articulators 
approach each other however the gap is rather let's say wide in, indeed it's uh, called a wide approximation uh, so basically there is no obstruction to the air stream here um, however we should uh, make the difference between approximant and the lateral approximant which is the sound O um, in order to understand what this is um, we might do the following exercise um, just position the articulation um, as for example to pronounce the sound U without pronouncing it and then start breathing heavily do the same thing only with the sound U. so for example and just with the sound you are bound to notice that while producing um, the sound U, you uh, might feel a cold air passing in the middle of the tongue whereas while producing the sound L, you um, feel the um, cold air escaping from the sides of the tongue from the side parts of the tongue and as a matter of fact lateral means the side part and that's why it is called lateral uh, approximant because the air stream escapes from the lateral part whereas in the case of u, i and r um, the air stream escapes mm, in the middle of the tongue and um, also affricate sound what happens here basically you are going to notice that we have here both elements of plosives and elements of fricative indeed it starts as a plosive uh, the articulators touch each other form the seal however the air is released as in the case of a fricative um, it is not suddenly released like in the case of a plosive, instead a gap is created and the air stream is gradually released from the vocal tract. Chi, j. Uh, finally, we have come to the nasal consonants. And uh, before uh, just uh, showing you the diagram of the nasal sounds, I'd like to come back to this um, picture and particularly to the velum, um, which is also called the soft palate, um, and um, specify the fact that when uh, the velum is raised the air is um, um, the air uh, escapes from the, uh, to, uh, to, from the oral cavity uh, it blocks the nasal cavity whereas why uh, while pronouncing a nasal sound the velum is lowered and the air stream escapes um, through the nasal cavity and uh, the diagram would be uh, the following so in the oral cavity you see that the articulators touch each other it's basically the case of a plosive the difference is um, in the fact that the air is released uh, through the nasal cavity so while pronouncing the sound m, the lips form the seal, whereas the air um, is not released from the oral cavity, from the mouth, but uh, through the nose, through the nasal cavity. And as a matter of fact, um, these consonants are also called um, nasal stops. So that would be all concerning the manner of articulation. Definitely, this is the basic information. And um, this time, I'd like to um, finish a bit differently. And 
uh, I'd like just to uh, finish with tongue twisters, uh, which is another way of um, practicing uh, your pronunciation. Let's see if I can um, make it. A big black bug, blue big blue bubbles. Mm. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Long leg, the ladies last longer. Questionable, I'd say. We surely shall see the sunshine soon. I thought, I thought of thinking of thanking you, didn't I? Okay, thank you. See you next time.